Good morning guys, so welcome back to another episode of our vlog. So today we start uh, with a view of the Kwai River. We're gonna have some breakfast. Alright, so here it is, our breakfast. So first of all we have uh, egg, fried eggs, a uh, side side up, uh, salad, two sausages, two hams, some bacon, uh, for some tea or coffee, and some toast with salted butter and jam. Mm. Alright, so we packed up our stuff. We're leaving Kanchanaburi today. We're gonna be heading to Pechaburi today just for a quick stopover. Then we'll be heading to Patalong in the days after. So yeah, we're gonna be checking out and I'll see you on the road. So before we head out to Kanchanaburi, we're here at the Kanchanaburi train station again because you know we gotta see those trains. Um, but the thing we want to see is actually behind the train station, it's one of the last Bayer Peacock Garrets in Asia. However, before we do so, we must obviously see Kanchanaburi Station, which, as you can tell, is quite quiet today. There's not much going on. We have a locomotive here, there's a few freight cars, I think ballast or gravel or something. But yeah, it's quite a quiet morning here in the station. No passengers, nobody's waiting. There's quite a quiet morning. Well, there it is, 457, SRT 457. I think this one is quite well taken off. The cosmetic restoration on this is impeccable, actually. Compared to the ones they have in Malaysia, they don't even paint these. So it's nice to see that this is somewhat still um, kept in a prime store condition. So this thing is a 282 plus 282. It's like a double Mikado, basically. And it's absolutely huge when you're standing right next to it. Yeah, apparently you can climb through this too. Not much in here. Tender brake, the throttle, firebox, reverser, remnants of old gauges. So the calendar is steeply grade the Klan Khoi, the Pak Chong section of Thailand. Uh, Henshaw and Sons were commissioned to build these double Mikados and they, they provided 8 of these under the Bayer Garrett uh, patent. So they delivered here and they were worked along here and now it is preserved in Kanchanaburi. Alright, so we are outside the River Kwai Museum, I think. So we're just kind of stopping, we'll be driving down in a minute, but basically there are two engines here, both of which are not originally meant for Thailand. So this is JNR C56 regaged plinth here for eternity. Now this one is from Malaysia. Federated Malay State Railways P class 462. Look at it. I cannot believe I'm seeing a Malayan train in Thailand. Quite interesting to see because even in my own country I probably wouldn't be able to see it in this sort of state as bad as maybe so here we also found this some sort of truck used to help build or aid in the construction of the death railway as you can see the wheels were taken out and replaced with flanged wheels to work on the rail so a quick walk from the two plinth locomotives we come to the river kwai train platform it's an active railway station but we're on the eastern side of there and you can see down there the bridge over river kwai uh, the name spoken in many books and movies but obviously it's not the original that one was bombed out years ago this is just, well, an actual proper bridge so just by going down these rails over there A bridge of a river Kwai, not D bridge and there it is the bridge over the river Kwai so some historical context. Basically, during World War II, to supply the Burma campaign, the Japanese had employed various prisoners of war and plenty of civilians and recruited them to basically build this railway all the way up to Burma. And this bridge is one of the last remaining pieces of that railway. As you can see, it's one of the more famous uh, tourist attractions in Kanchanaburi. This uh, locals selling their goods, trying to pass off their merchandise and their souvenirs to all these tourists, mainly from um, Myanmar or maybe even the descendants of war veterans that have come to pay respects because of the war cemetery. 
It's one of the more famous ones, as I've said. There's a little plaque here commemorating the 50th anniversary of the railway. So we have a sort of a map here showing how far the railway spans, where everything is. Some more stats too, like how long it took. Uh, where some of the more known locations are, like the Cutting Hill Fire Pass Memorial, further up the line. It's incredible stuff. You can go on the bridge if you want, but as you can see, it's a pretty hot tourist spot. Pretty rare that you would see this bridge empty. It's one section of it. So after departing the bridge over the river Kwai, we continue our journey to Tam Krasse Bridge. So much like the bridge over the river Kwai, the Tam Krasse Bridge is basically an extension of the Burma Railway that was built in World War II. Tam Krasse Bridge, is this the crossing? I think this is a little halt. We just walked down there to see the bridge. So this is Tam Krasse Bridge, a wooden construction that's crossing this little riverside bank. Um, in recent years they reinforced their concrete but this train still goes at a very slow pace. An additional fact about this bridge is that it is actually the longest railway bridge in Thailand. Aside from its use in World War II, nowadays people use it to cross the Khoi Noi River, the one that's next to right now. In the twist of events, it turns out that we were actually faster than the train when we were trying to get to the bridge. And as you can see, the train from earlier that passed us at the River Kwai station uh, is here now. It's here. There it goes. So after departing the Tam Krasse Bridge, we travel on over to the Veterinary and Agricultural Division of Danmakantia District, which is also in Kanchanaburi. And all because we actually want to see a very special tree. Uh, that's not what horses say. I don't think that's what horses say. Is this supposed to be actually spelled monkey? Monkey. Monkey. What? So to elaborate further, the giant monkey pot tree or the giant rain tree is a tree that's over a hundred years old, a century old here in Kanchanaburi. It is a, is a canopy with around a radius of 25 meters and it's about 20 meters tall. So it covers a lot of land basically and it's become a really popular tourist attraction because of how many people can fit under the tree. 
It's like a petting zoo or something. Go turn your face 20, but you can go in that Camping. I don't want to get in there. It smells really bad. There it is, the giant monkey pod tree. It's huge. That's not a mountain. That's a monkey pod tree. So on the grounds, there's a bunch of restaurants, stalls, selling drinks, food. But of course, there's the actual attraction itself. There's a little garden over here, benches, flower bushes, all leading up to the giant monkey paw tree. So as you can see, underneath, everybody's using it as a huge canopy. It's right down there, that's the main tree, with the branches going on the side. And over there, as you can see, surrounding the center of the tree, there is a sort of catwalk sitting area. It's really cooling and especially on such a hot day. It's like 42 degrees out here. Little doggy sleeping under the tree. The big monkey pond tree. So we decided to eat something here before we leave because it's around one o'clock now. So we found this little store. It's one of the only ones with seeds, so we said, yeah, let's have some rice. First round of food, we have some coconuts to drink, and then from some other store, we have some chicken nuggets and some fries, just to add on. So here is our meal for today. All of us are eating kapra kai. So basically, it's uh, rice with some basil pork, chili, and of course a fried egg piece. Looks absolutely delectable. So, with our lunch over, we decided to set our focus on reaching Pechaburi before nightfall. Once we let these cows pass our way first. So as time went on, you can tell that uh, night was starting to roll in. And we were almost there, mind you, when we spotted this. This is... wow. This is the Bangkok traffic. This, all of this, is... we're in Petraburi, mind you, and it leads all the way up to Bangkok. We have arrived at our hotel. Alright, after a quick shop, we have come over to Mondi Restaurant, a place my parents are quite familiar with, but I am not. So let's see what food they offer here. Incredible vibes here. Riverside. Very, very nice. First dish, fried eggs. We love fried eggs. Next thing we have is some green pork curry. So inside there you can see some pork, the curry. I think I see a few bits of pad thai, cucumbers as well. It smells incredible by the way if you were actually here to see this. Next up is white tom yum. In there you can see some pork, so I think some tofu too, some vegetables like tomatoes. You see some dry chili. It smells also really good. It looks super creamy. Alright, next thing we have is some shrimp cake. Look at how crispy it looks. And on the side we also have some sweet sauce to eat with it. Alright, and the next thing we have is century egg stir fried with basil. Look at it. Everything here looks absolutely amazing. Quite here. Before we go back to the hotel, we decided to come over to this chedi. Uh, just nearby the restaurant. Because we saw it on the way in. 
So here we are. As you can see the lights definitely uh, drew us into it, but uh, yeah, let's go have a look. So we came at quite an interesting time, as as you know from the past few videos, we are currently going through Songkran, which is a festival, well, a New Year festival, it's the Thai New Year. So here in the Wat, we have all sorts of things going on, we have shops, we have stalls, we have lights, we have performances, it is a really, really interesting time to be here. So Wat Mahata Wal Rahihan doesn't really have a founding date because not many people know when it really comes from but a lot of people think it may be from the Mon Devarati era or the Khmer era. There's a lot of objects found that may imply 8 to 10 centuries ago it was built. But, uh, the reason why this is a problem is because nothing remains of the original structures. The pranks have been rebuilt so many times that it's basically unknown when they came from. So inside here, this is what is called the Cloister of Buddha Images. So basically along the walls and well, the statues, you see a bunch of, well, Buddha images, most of them in the Mara subduing posture. And, well, there's quite a lot of them, golden statues, incredible artwork on the walls, quite a lot to see. So, if you go past the cloister, you'll eventually reach the center of Wat Mahatat, where you'll find the courtyard. In the courtyard stands the five massive prangs, and it's huge. It has a name too, Pra Prang Hayot, or the five peak prang. And it was apparently built in Khmer slash Baburi style, and was built during the Sukhothai era. And apparently, inside is a tooth relic of the Gotama Buddha. So, as I've said earlier, this temple has gone through major restorations and this piece here is an example of that. This ornament used to be on top of the chedi, but eventually got replaced by a new mold. Today was a really special day. Because the prong was open, we were able to climb up these really really steep steps and well eventually we got inside and we were able to you know just have a glance at the buddha relic in the middle Shadies I've seen thus far in this trip. Not only is it beautifully restored with brand new plastic cuts for each statue, but there's lights and fairy lights everywhere showing off its holy presence in the dead of night. We decided that one better way to end the night by having some dessert with the view of the temple. So here we are at this uh, dessert store opposite the temple and they've got some shaved ice that we like to try. So my mom told me a story. The last time they came here, Pechaburi was a ghost town. Nothing was active. The only thing they could see was this shaved ice store. So here's the first thing we have here, some shaved ice of course, of course. There's some jelly too on the side, some taro I think. There's a bit of a mango jelly at the side. Looks really, really good. Refreshing for such a hot night. So then there's the next one we have. This is sort of like a milk uh, consistency with some taro and some peanuts too. Pretty good. So we have our desserts, but enjoy now. So, uh, I didn't record an outro, I kind of forgot, 
we were really tired, and I've done this the second time in the series now. Very sorry. But, yeah, it's time to go. Thank you.